Welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, last time we remember we um, we found that yes the machine was capable of producing 255 levels of grey and engraving each one of those levels but just using an ordinary photograph didn't really work. Yes we could get different levels of grey but because the picture was not properly constructed the meaning of the photograph really didn't come out very well at all. Today what we're going to do is take a quick look at how maybe we should be producing these grey scale shapes. Here we are in Photoshop and we've got a transparent screen set up and what we've got on Photoshop is something called a gradient tool which we can select and then that allows us to go up here and we can choose various colour schemes for gradients. We'll choose this simple one here which is basically a black to clear. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is draw something which has got all sorts of grey in it and then I'll draw another one and then we can change to a different shape which will be a circle. It does look very interesting but at least there are three very simple shapes there that should demonstrate the principle this time of 256 shades of grey. In fact if you've got enough imagination that would be a good title for a book. So what we'll do, we'll trim that down We'll save that as a bitmap file and we'll send that across to RD Works. So here's our picture in RD Works now. And what we're going to do is to just quickly look at the parameters because we're not going to change anything on here. We will use some fairly slow speed, 40 millimeters a second. And we're going to use my minimum power of eight and my maximum power of 25 which is where my linearity tends to run out after 25 percent and we're going to just use straightforward output direct and leave everything else the same so these are very similar characteristics to the best ones that we found when we were trying to do photographic engraving which we failed on so we'll now save this to an rd file and we'll nip out to the machine well here we are at the machine and I've already set up and cut a couple of versions of this file. Now what I've got here, I've got some extra air because I was told that uh, you know when you're doing engraving to try and keep the smoke levels down as much as possible you probably need some extra air. So what I've done, I've got a little stainless steel pipe here and I've got that pointing down to uh, roughly where the beam hits the wood. Now you'll notice I've got a very large gap here. Uh, which is why I've actually projected this tube down here. That's because I'm using a two and a half inch lens. This lens is specifically designed for engraving, especially at higher powers, but I'm not overly impressed. And I'll just shine a little LED torch onto it. You can see that there's not really much shape in there. There's a bit of a, certainly not a star shape in there. It goes a little bit deeper and a little bit hollower. And then when we look at this one, which is a negative engraving of the same thing, yeah, we've got three lumps in there, but they're not very well defined, and they certainly don't look anything like stars. So, you know, and it's nice and deep, as you can see. We're probably four millimetres deep, the cut. Now, this particular wood is a piece of wood that I got from a local company. They manufacture bespoke kitchens out of real wood and I thought they would be a good company to go to to see what they've got in their scrap bin. Now this happens to be a piece of tulip wood. I've been advised by lots of guys that probably maple is one of the better woods to use. Well here in the UK, lots of oak, lots of beech, lots of ash, maple is not one of our, um, not one of our native woods so it's a bit difficult to get hold of but this particular guy had some maple and I will do some work with some maple later on but in the first instance I'm using this tulip wood which is um, it's classed as a semi hardwood it's softish but a nice material to work with but it's still got some grain in it now I'm just using it in its rough sawn state because we're only just interested in what shapes we make we're not interested in the finished article but what I'm now going to do is to change the lens now changing the lens on this machine is very easy um, as I, from what I understand from some of the communications, not everybody has uh, a simple lens change like this. I mean, I can just take my lens out.
and there it is and as I mentioned to you before I don't feel comfortable about handling this material now that I've read the data sheet about it so I shall swap my lens over using my little cotton gloves put the flat side up at the moment which is in fact finishing up flat side down but now that I've done that the curved side is up And there we go, it's as simple as that for me to change my lens. <clears throat> because I know that it's going to cut deep, I'm going to drop it down about, it's about a mil and a half. First thing we'll do, we'll do a copy of that one, which is already loaded up. Just turn some extraction on. Now I've not got additional air on this one, because I've got my, um, my air assist is quite good and it's very close to the surface. So it should do a fairly good job of clearing it anyway, the standard air assist. Well, I've added some additional air this time. Um, I'm afraid it's a little bit of a bodge, but it'll, uh, it'll do the job. And we'll see what happens when we try the alternative shape. Just add some air. Well, here we are back in Photoshop, and I have to admit that those grayscale shapes were a little bit of a disaster. I mean, they were just hollows. There was no shape to them. So obviously that's not the correct way to go about drawing a grayscale picture. Now I did that as an example because they looked as though they should work. But I have to thank several people that have sent me files that have been specially pre-prepared for engraving. Now here's one in particular that somebody was kind enough to send me and as you can see there are extremes of white and black on there. It is fairly light with just a little bit of black around the edges. So this is slightly different to the grayscale pictures that I constructed. So maybe we ought to go and have a quick look and see how this cuts. First of all, I'm going to just immediately jump in and use a piece of maple. Now that's a very strange wood. It's, uh, it almost looks wet when it's finished cutting. It's got some sort of... Uh, gloss on the surface almost, a shiny wet look. It's certainly got a completely different cutting characteristic. It's not that bad that side of it, it? And here we go, we'll try something else now. I'm just showing this long distance shot so you can see how effective my extraction system is with all this smoke. When I'm standing out here and I'm not detecting any hint of smell, smoke smell, because it's all being drawn out through the machine and thrown away outside my workshop here. Now although we can't see that one properly at the moment because it's not been cleaned up, it's still got certain residue on it, um, I think that's probably going to come out quite nicely. But that was done at 40 millimeters a second. So I think what we now do, we'll ramp the speed up to something like maybe 120 millimetres a second and see what difference that makes to the depth and to the resolution. Well, because I've got a non-linear response on this machine, um, I'm going to put the power up to something like about 
and do one more. <clears throat> Well, here in Maplewood is my attempt at a grayscale picture. Pretty abysmal, isn't it? It's just a, a funny, hollow shape. But that's because there was no definition in the grayscale. It was almost a linear grayscale from white to black towards the centre of each image. Now, somebody sent me this picture, for which I'm grateful. Um, it's a Jules Verne Man in the Moon 3D rendition. It's been specially prepared. Um, not a huge amount of detail into it, but a very interesting 3D rendition. That was done at 8%, 25% and 40 millimeters a second, quite slow. The next one, for comparison, was done at 120 millimeters a second, exactly the same settings. And then finally, eight percent and 65 percent at 120 millimeters a second. So I think as we look back along those, you can see that the ideal settings are much slower settings you get better definition you get more depth of carving with slower speeds now as i mentioned several people have sent me uh, pre-prepared pictures I, I like this one in particular um, again if you look at this you'll see that there's lots of white in it there's lots of contrast there's white and shades of white and gray very light white and gray um, the eagle in the middle is mm, mid-tone gray and uh, I was a little bit concerned about that so I thought what I'd do is have a quick bash at uh, doing a, a quick test to start with so I just sent this to across to RD Works and ran it to see what I could get but I did some preliminary test work with a piece of plywood as you can see there the definition of the eagle is not very good at all I was surprised that I got quite good depth and I was playing around with some of the settings that I used for, for the dog trials that I did last time. Now one of the more interesting things that I did in the run-up to this um, was these two pictures here. Now they're both done with a 63mm lens and you can immediately see the difference between the inch and a half lens which is here and the, the two and a half inch lens which is here the depth for the same sort of settings is probably half as deep and they're not very fine quality either and i'm not so sure although the lines in this background here are a little bit finer than the coarse lines over here um, i don't think that this looks as nice as potentially that one could and certainly the eagles have completely disappeared from this one now the reason why I've done these two side by side because this is done at 100 millimeters a second and I used 8 and 25 percent as my um, settings there's an advanced tab beside the power settings We've got a frequency setting, which is by default 20 kilohertz, which is the same frequency as the laser itself. Now I'm still trying to find out exactly what this does, but having done these two tests side by side, one with the setting at the default 20 kilohertz, and the other one right at the bottom end of its range supposedly, which is 5 kilohertz, I can't see any difference between them. You know, you start looking at some of the detail like here and here and here and here and there's virtually no difference. In fact, I would say, if anything, this one is not quite as crisp. I've written away to Rueda, the people that design the software, and I've written away to my tube people as well to see if I can find out just what effect this 20 kilohertz setting 
has. So these were just preliminary tests to find out where I should be working. And because the quality of that eagle there was not particularly good, um, I've been back and looked at the picture. Well, back in Photoshop here, um, we've got the picture on the left there, which is the picture that we did the preliminary tests with on plywood, where the eagle was really nowhere to be seen. It disappeared into the background. But as I did indicate before we carried out the test, it is shades of mid-grey, which had a tendency to disappear when I was using mid-grey. Now, what I've done on the right-hand side, I've reworked the eagle in the centre there so that it's much whiter and brighter. There's still lots of contrast there, but I'm hopeful that that will make it come forward almost to where the frame is. So we'll save that to RD Works and we will go across and give that a try. Well again we're going to do this example at the, uh, the best speed that we found before which was 40 millimeters a second and a power of 8% to 25%. It's black and it's brown and it's sticky but I think that's going to clean up very well but before we do that what I'm going to do is just try one more test so here we're using bamboo um, it's across the grain and it's still at 40 millimeters a second 8% minimum power 25% maximum power just ordinary hot water and a dish brush. Well, I have to say that the engraving definition is excellent. It's just sad that all these different types of bamboo create different results. But this particular piece of white bamboo is got some incredible detail onto it. It really is good looking. You can even see the grapes or berries up here. Yeah, when we compare that with the maple one which is on the left, the bamboo one on the right is actually I think a, a much crisper picture. So maybe there's something that can be done there with other materials. Um, at the moment, should I try a piece of acrylic. I could try a piece of acrylic I suppose. I suppose finally no test would be complete without my favourite five millimetre, sorry this is eight millimetre thick acrylic. And of course acrylic is a much more uniform and homogeneous material so if we're going to get good results it should be from something like acrylic or even hardboard. You could make this into an edge-lit sign, I suspect, if this comes out well. well. I have to say that that one looks as though it is going to come out really well. well we're going to give this one the same water torture. stuff that's on the surface here is not quite the same as a bit of burnt wood so it might not yield to exactly the same treatment and as I expected when you edge illuminate it depending on where you illuminate it from and how you illuminate it it changes its characteristics That's from the front. And I think it looks even better when I illuminate it from the back. And as we move it across the lights, we get all sorts of very interesting effects.
at the end of part one of the history of engraving if you remember I said I'd be very happy if I could get to do any sort of 3D engraving um, this has far exceeded my expectations um, we could go further I could try to improve it but the principle has been proved now, several people sent me prepared pictures to carve and I would like to thank them for the help and cooperation I didn't use all the pictures um, because there were far too many to include in this short session but I think I've reached a point with 3D carving now where yes I know it's possible B I know that I shan't be able to produce my own pictures um, they need to be done by specialists or specialist software now we may touch on 3D engraving when we when we look at other principles and practices of um, of etching and laser marking so this might not be the last time we see these pictures